Hello guys. Today we will explore the brain and nervous system from a nursing perspective. The human brain contains over 100 billion nerve cells, neurons. These nerve cells receive electrochemical impulses from everywhere in the body. They interpret these impulses and send responsive signals back to various glands and muscles. The brain functions continuously as a switchboard for the human communication system. At the same time, it serves as the seat of emotions and mood, of memory, personality and thought. Extending from the brain is an additional cluster of nerve cells that forms the spinal cord. Together, these two elements comprise the central nervous system. Radiating from the central nervous system is the peripheral nervous system, which has three parts. One branches off the spinal cord and extends to skin and muscles throughout the body. Another in the head links the brain to the eyes, ears, nose and taste buds. The third is a semi-independent network called the autonomic or involuntary nervous system. This is the part of the nervous system that controls unconscious body functions such as breathing, digestion and glandular activity. Signals traverse the nervous system by electrical and chemical means. Electrical impulses carry signals from one end of a neuron to the other. To cross the gap between neurons, chemical neurotransmitters are released from one cell to bind on to the receptor sites of nearby cells. Excitatory transmitters stimulate action, inhibitory transmitters reduce it. What can go wrong? Disorders of the brain and nervous system may manifest as illnesses that show themselves as physical impairments, such as epilepsy or strokes, or as mental and emotional impairments. For example, schizophrenia or depression. Illnesses causing physical impairments can result from different types of disorder of the brain and nervous system. Death of nerve cells resulting from poor circulation can result in paralysis, while electrical disturbances of certain nerve cells cause the fits of epilepsy. Temporary changes in blood circulation within and around the brain are thought to cause migraine. Parkinson's disease is caused by a lack of dopamine, a neurotransmitter that is produced by specialized brain cells. The causes of disorders that trigger mental and emotional impairment are not known. But these illnesses are thought to result from the defective functioning of nerve cells and neurotransmitters. The nerve cells may be underactive, overactive, or poorly coordinated. Alternatively, mental and emotional impairment may be due to too much or too little neurotransmitter in one area of the brain. Why drugs are used? By and large, the drugs described in this section do not eliminate nervous system disorders. Their function is to correct or modify the communication of the signals that traverse the nervous system. By doing so, they can relieve symptoms or restore normal functioning and behavior. In some cases, such as anxiety and insomnia, drugs are used to lower the level of activity in the brain. In other disorders, depression for example, drugs are given to encourage the opposite effect, increasing the level of activity. Drugs that act on the nervous system are also used for conditions that outwardly have nothing to do with nervous system disorders. Migraine headaches, for example, are often treated with drugs that cause the autonomic nervous system to send out signals constricting the dilated blood vessels that cause the migraine. Major drug groups, analgesics, sleeping drugs, anti-anxiety drugs, antidepressant drugs, antipsychotic drugs, anticonvulsant drugs, Drugs for Parkinsonism, nervous system stimulants. Drugs for migraine, antiemetics, analgesics. Analgesics, painkillers are drugs that relieve pain. Since pain is not a disease but a symptom, long-term relief depends on treatment of the underlying cause. For example, the pain of toothache can be relieved by drugs but can be cured only by appropriate dental treatment. If the underlying disorder is irreversible, such as some rheumatic conditions, long-term analgesic treatment may be necessary. Damage to body tissues as a result of disease or injury is detected by nerve endings that transmit signals to the brain. The interpretation of these sensations can be affected by the psychological state of the individual, so that pain is worsened by anxiety and fear, for example. Often, a reassuring explanation of the cause of discomfort can make pain easier to bear and may even relieve it altogether. Anti-anxiety drugs are helpful when pain is accompanied by anxiety, and some of these drugs are also used to reduce painful muscle spasms. Antidepressant drugs act to block the transmission of impulses signaling pain. 
and are particularly useful for nerve pains, neuralgia, which do not always respond to analgesics. Types of analgesics. Analgesics are divided into the opioids with similar properties to drugs derived from opium, such as morphine and non-opioids. Non-opioids include all the other analgesics, including paracetamol, nefepam, and also the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs NSAIDs, the most well-known of which is aspirin. The non-opioids are all less powerful as painkillers than the opioids. Local anesthetics are also used to relieve pain. Opioid drugs and paracetamol act directly on the brain and spinal cord to alter the perception of pain. Opioids act like the endorphins, hormones naturally produced in the brain that stop the cell-to-cell -cell transmission of pain sensation. NSAIDs prevent stimulation of the nerve endings at the site of the pain. When pain is treated under medical supervision, it is common to start with paracetamol or an NSAID. If neither provides adequate pain relief, they may be combined. A mild opioid, for example codeine, may also be used. If the less powerful drugs are ineffective, a strong opioid such as morphine may be given. Very severe pain may be treated with injections of opioids or, in some cases when rapid pain relief is needed, with injectable NSAIDs. When treating pain with an over-the-counter preparation, for example, taking aspirin for a headache, you should seek medical advice if pain persists for longer than 48 hours, recurs, or is worse or different from previous pain. Non-opioid analgesics, paracetamol. This analgesic is believed to act by reducing the production of chemicals called prostaglandins in the brain. However, paracetamol does not affect prostaglandin production in the rest of the body, so it does not reduce inflammation, although it can reduce fever. Paracetamol can be used for everyday aches and pains, such as headaches, toothache and joint pains. It is given as a liquid to treat pain and reduce fever in children. As well as being the most widely used analgesic, it is one of the safest when taken correctly. It does not usually irritate the stomach and allergic reactions are rare. However, an overdose can cause severe and possibly fatal liver or kidney damage. Its toxic potential may be increased in heavy drinkers. Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, NSAIDs, aspirin. Used for many years to relieve pain and reduce fever, aspirin also acts to reduce inflammation by blocking the production of prostaglandins, which contribute to the swelling and pain in inflamed tissue. Aspirin is useful for headaches, toothaches, mild rheumatic pain, sore throat, and discomfort caused by feverish illnesses. Given regularly, it can also relieve the pain and inflammation of chronic rheumatoid arthritis. Aspirin is often found in combination with other substances in a variety of medicines. Another use is in the treatment of some blood disorders, since aspirin helps to prevent abnormal clotting of blood. For this reason, it is not suitable for people whose blood does not clot normally, Aspirin in the form of soluble tablets, dissolved in water before being taken, is absorbed into the bloodstream more quickly, thereby relieving pain faster than tablets. Soluble aspirin is not, however, less irritating to the stomach lining. Aspirin is available in many forms, all of which have a similar effect, but because the amount of aspirin in a tablet of each type varies, it is important to read the packet for the correct dosage. It is not recommended for children aged under 12 years because its use has been linked to Reye syndrome, a rare but potentially fatal liver and brain disorder. Other non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, NSAIDs, these drugs can relieve both pain and inflammation. NSAIDs are related to aspirin and also work by blocking the production of prostaglandins. They are most commonly used to treat muscle and joint pain and may also be prescribed for menstrual period pain. Combined analgesics. Mild opioids, such as codeine, are often found in combination preparations with non-opioids, such as paracetamol or NSAIDs. The prefix CO is used to denote a drug combination. These mixtures may add the advantages of analgesics that act on the brain to the benefits of those acting at the site of pain. Another advantage of combining analgesics is that the reductions in dose of the components may reduce the side effects of the preparation. Combinations can be helpful in reducing the number of tablets taken during long-term treatment. Opioid analgesics. These drugs are related to opium, an extract of poppy seeds. They act directly on several sites in the central nervous system involved in pain perception 
and block the transmission of pain signals. Because they act directly on the parts of the brain where pain is perceived, opioids are the strongest analgesics and are therefore used to treat the pain arising from surgery, serious injury and cancer. These drugs are particularly valuable for relieving severe pain during terminal illnesses. In addition, their ability to produce a state of relaxation and euphoria is often of help in relieving the stress that accompanies severe pain. Morphine is the best-known opioid analgesic. Others include diamorphine, heroin and pethidine. The use of these powerful opioids is strictly controlled because the euphoria produced can lead to abuse and addiction. When these opioids are given under medical supervision to treat severe pain, the risk of addiction is negligible. Opioid analgesics may prevent clear thought and cloud consciousness. Other possible adverse effects include nausea, vomiting, constipation, drowsiness, and depressed breathing. When taken in overdose, these drugs may induce a deep coma and lead to fatal breathing difficulties. In addition to the powerful opioids, there are less powerful drugs in this group that are used to relieve mild to moderate pain. They include dextropropoxyphene, dihydrocodine, and codeine. They're normally unwanted side effects of depressing respiration and causing. Constipation make them useful as cough suppressants and anti-diarrheal drugs. Common drugs. Among the opioids we can find, cocodamol, cocodaprin, codeine, codidromol, coproximol, diamorphine heroin, dipipinone, fentanyl, meptazanol, methadone, morphine, pentazacine, pethidine, phenazacine, tramadol, among the NSAIDs we can find, aspirin, diclofenac, etodolac, fenbufen, phenoprofen, ibuprofen, indomethacin, ketoprofen, ketorolac, mephanamic acid, naproxen, peroxicam, other non-opioids, nephopam, paracetamol. Please subscribe to the channel and leave a like if you enjoyed this video. Thank you.